what is God like? Well, we can't ever fully know God. He is so vast, so infinite, and we are limited and finite. But we can know some things about him from the pages of scripture. Because Why did God make us finite? And, and why do you want to know this being at all? Would he expect us to know him if he was honest while making us finite? Would a truthful God try to communicate with us telepathically instead of making eye contact which a mature person would, which many people value? He tells us about himself. And one thing about God is that he is truthful. It's not just that God tells the truth, but he is the final standard of truth. Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not a man. I don't even know what that means. How can levels or standards exist when it comes to truth? Something is either the truth or it isn't. This almost sounds like you're trying to say God has his own brand of truth. That would only mean his version of it though. The problem is though, Christianity may be the truth, but that doesn't mean it's good. My position isn't even about whether God is truthful or not, or whether any religion is the truth or not, because even if any of them are, that would they should still be rejected because these religions are psychotic and horrible. All sensible and moral people would reject psychotic and hor violent truths. Being worshippers of faith in that book, how truthful are you? That he should lie. What an interesting string of words because that's basically saying that to be a person is synonymous with being a liar. Every single person who has ever lived has told a lie. And nobody ever had to teach us how to do that either. It came naturally because we were born sinners. Not God. He can't. Not God. Let's look at that. How did we become sinners? Adam and Eve ate from the magic tree which told them, which God told them not to. God banished them because they did, which means they disobeyed him. And then we all became, quote, sinners. Sin is defined as the absence of God. Now, the problem is that Adam and Eve were with God. So even the presence of God caused sin or resulted in it. They were tempted by the serpent a creature which was also in God's presence. How could that snake deceive them? Doesn't that fuck Christianity up right there? How can anything go wrong in God's presence, let alone being created by God? Well, we're all a product of sinful reproduction, even within marriage. Marriage doesn't stop sin. There's also the little problem with the sin itself. Did Adam and Eve decide they should be banished, or was that God's call? That would mean God caused. That would mean God caused the sin. Lie. The verse goes on to say, "Neither the Son of Man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good?" One is lying the problem here. How do you know God is being honest about heaven? Even if God is honest, He created hell to torture people in who don't accept Jesus. How is that being a reality good? God has committed severe harm on the people and has killed many. That's far worse than lying. God is allowed to kill? That makes you an adv advocate for killing, which is psychosis. If God says something, we can count on him to be forever faithful to fulfill that promise. Even if God is good for his word, how does that make his word good, and why do you side with this being? So even though I was born a sinner, a natural born liar, the good news of the gospel is that Christ has redeemed me from that old nature, that I don't have to lie. What have you regained if man's inherent nature is sin because of Adam and Eve? You didn't have anything before your birth. Adam and Eve were supposedly perfect. Jesus Christ only provides the path to heaven, through God's forgiveness, but man never had that to lose. This statement makes no sense. That being said, you're still a liar, which invalidates this video, along with every religious display in the world, and every religious word ever spoken. We are all pathological liars because of sin? Okay, that, dis that discounts every religion then. You said it, lady, I didn't. How we... How have we survived as long as we have, as humans, if we're incapable of honesty? Sin couldn't happen if God actually existed because Adam and Eve wouldn't have been capable of dishonesty, which includes disobedience, 
the only way they could have disobeyed is because of ignorance. The question then would be, why were they ignorant? Why did God want ignorance? How can anybody know God if he wants ignorance? As I surrender to letting Jesus live out through me, that I can fulfill these verses in Colossians 3, verses 9 through 10 that say, Lie not one to another. Why do you want to be under submission and want the world to be under submission? Seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. It takes the supernatural enabling grace of God just to be a truthful person. Lying has become so... How can anything stop sin if it's inherent and cannot be escaped, as many Christians would say? That means neither God's grace nor human repentance can stop it. Repentance is only admission to it, while forgiveness is only God forgetting about it. Forgiveness doesn't stop sin. Again though, rape, torture, and murder are all far worse than lying. Acceptable, even down to the phrase, a little white lie, as if it's not a big deal. It's a pretty big deal, seeing as how Satan is the father of lies, the exact opposite since you're referring to scripture here, what does it say exactly about Satan? I'm reading the script as I progress in this video, so I haven't heard it all yet. But I'm certain you don't bother reading that book about Satan. In character of God. In Proverbs chapter 6, starting in verse 17, it talks about things that God hates. And in verse 17, it starts to list them. And it says, a proud look, a lying tongue, second on the list, and then a Oh, everything God hates. What's to like about this God? He likes servitude and obedience, though. God is very self-absorbed. You later, it says, a false witness that speaketh lies. God really hates lying. So well, that being said, it's such a comfort to know that God is never going to lie to me. If God said it, that settles it. He's the... So, if somebody kidnapped you and told you every painful thing he's going to do to you, just because you exist, wrong place, wrong time type deal, would you be content with that honesty? No? So how is God any fucking different? Final authority. And if God has promised it, he will do it. Now there's a little confusion today on what exactly God has promised. This you mean God is a tyrannic dictator? How is that something to take comfort in knowing, as you claim to know? Why do you want authority, and want the world to be under submission to this authority? This is not health, wealth, prosperity, gospel. This is not name it and claim it. This is possessing our possessions, or claiming what God has already named for us. Mainly in the provision of Jesus Christ, who's living in our core. The fact that he will never leave us or forsake us. The fact that in the person of Jesus Christ, there is absolutely everything that we need, that we have ever needed, that we will ever need. That is such a relief, because knowing the character of God in that he is truthful, means that I can take that promise to the bank. That means that I can laugh without fear of the future. And should the future ever be something to fear? Why do you want to take anything about this God to the bank? How is it being the truth a valid reason to value God's honest word? Honesty can be both good and bad. One more thing. To seek God is to seek truth. His truth, not my truth. I'm air quoting that so hard. Because Why do you want God's truth to be so? And how does it being God's truth make it good? Again though, you claim that man is always lying, so what good is your word? How can you have a truth?